In this video, I'm going to give an overview of JavaScript's prototypal inheritance model. If you're coming from a language like C++ or Java, which has classical inheritance, prototypal inheritance can be a little confusing at first. But once you learn it, it can be a lot of fun to use and can even be more intuitive than classical inheritance in some situations. I'm going to be typing in Chrome's console here so that we can interact with some things and get some instant feedback. We're going to get started by using a feature which is relatively new to JavaScript, but it simplifies the process of working with prototypal inheritance, object.create. This function can take either an object or null as its first argument. If it's an object, the function will create a new object with the argument as its prototype. If it's null, the function will create a new object which doesn't have a prototype. I'm going to be explaining what we mean by prototype as we go along. Let's start by defining a really broad object which will serve as the base unit or prototype of other objects. For instance, we could define an object named organism and by using object.create null, we are defining an object which doesn't inherit from any other objects. So organism is a blank object. It starts with nothing. Next, we can define other objects which inherit from organism by defining organism to be in the prototype chain of those objects. For instance, var animal equals object.create organism creates an object which inherits from organism and assigns that object to the variable animal. Next, we can do the same thing and define a variable called mammal. And this object, of course, will inherit from animal. So we set animal to be the prototype of mammal. And then we'll define dog to be an object which has mammal as its prototype. And finally, I'm going to define a certain dog named spot. And spot inherits from dog. So we have a clearly defined hierarchy here. An animal is an organism, a mammal is an animal, a dog is a mammal, and spot is a dog. We can define properties on objects. For instance, we might say that a mammal has hair. So we set the property has hair on mammal to be true. Since the prototype of dog is mammal, we should also expect dog.has hair to be true. And since dog is the prototype of spot, then spot.has hair is also true. However, animal does not inherit from mammal, and animal.hashair is undefined. Likewise, organism.hashair is also undefined. We could set a hashair property on organism so that by default, it's false. That way, animal.hashair will be false, but mammal.hashair is still true, and dog.hashair is also true. So the property that's defined on mammal overrides the default property, which is defined on organism. Now let's define some other properties on spot to give them a little bit of character. Spot.name should be spot. Uh, all dogs have four legs, so we'll say dog.numlegs is four. Also dogs bark, so dog.speak could be a function, which just returns wolf wolf. Also we'll say spot.color is white spot.pattern is spots spot.pattern color meaning the color of the spots is black and spot.weight is 22 pounds if you inspect this object in the console you'll see now that spot has all these properties defined on him you also see this property here that's underscore underscore proto this is the prototype of spot which should be dog if we inspect this object, you see that it has num legs defined to four, and it also has a speak function which returns wolf wolf. So we could say spot dot speak, and we get wolf wolf. This is a function that it's inheriting from dog. So all dogs can say wolf wolf, but only spot is white. So far, this is kind of like classical inheritance, but more dynamic because we can add properties and remove properties as we go along. However, instead of working with two things, classes and instances, we're really only working with one thing, just objects. Objects inherit from other objects. Some objects serve as a prototype for other objects. This is prototypal inheritance. And this is where the concept of prototypes gets very interesting. I'm going to define another dog named George, and George is going to be a pretty different kind of dog from Spot. George is going to be a poodle. George's name, of course, is George. George's color, let's make him gray. And since George is a poodle, his hair texture is curly. 
Also, George is a bit of a bigger dog from Spot, so George's weight is 50 pounds. You can see George is a really different kind of dog from Spot, but let's say I wanted to find another dog that was very similar to George, but it just differed in one or two aspects. Jake is a miniature poodle. So we say Jake equals object.create George. What this does is it creates a new object named Jake, which automatically inherits all the properties from George because Jake is a lot like George. The only difference is Jake is a miniature poodle and he has a different name. So Jake.name is Jake and Jake.weight is 15 pounds. Otherwise, Jake has the same color, same hair texture as George. If we inspect the Jake object, we see that it has its own properties, name and weight, but it also inherits these properties from George. So jake.color is still gray, but jake.weight is 15 pounds. This is something that doesn't happen in classical inheritance. George is his own unique object. He's not a class or some sort of abstract concept. He's got his own specific defined properties, but we can also say, hey, Jake is a lot like George. Then by default, Jake gets everything from George, but we can override different properties as we go along, and Jake starts to take on his own characteristics. Another interesting thing that happens is that if we add more details to George's description later, Jake also inherits them by default. So if we said George.lovesbacon is true, then Jake.lovesbacon is also going to be true.